last time, which was day one of limits, we saw the following and used that if P of X is a polynomial, that the limit as X approaches B of P of X equals P of B. This came from properties of limits together with the limit of f of x is x and the limit of a constant. But this property here has a name. This property has a name. It's called continuity. So let me give the definition although we we see it here for polynomials but generally a function f of x is continuous at x equals b provided exactly this that the limit as x approaches b of f of x equals f of b. Now, it's important to understand that this definition has three parts, really. So this has three parts. I'll do them in pink. First of all, the limit as x approaches b of f of x exists. We saw some examples last time where the limit didn't exist, okay? And the second thing is that b is in the domain of f. Another way to say this part two is that f of b is defined. Maybe I'll write that. In other words, f of b is defined. And then the third thing is that they're actually equal. So you need the limit to exist, you need the function value to exist, and then you need the two to be equal. So the third thing in continuity is that the limit actually equals this function value. Now what's the idea here? Maybe I will quickly just sketch and then we will go back and look at the picture that we had last time that we started with and ask the question of continuous at some x values. But the idea is that f is continuous at an x value provided you can trace through the point b comma f of b on the graph without lifting your pen or your marker, or your pencil, or whatever you're using. Now, maybe I'll just draw a picture of what I mean. You have, I'll do it very short here, and then we will go back, as I mentioned, look at the example. You have some function. And then you have b comma f of b. And you can trace through without lifting your pen. This is the idea of continuity. I just want to discuss continuity at a few x values. And for instance, this function is continuous at zero. We come in here and then we, we can, you can see with my spotlight thing we can trace through uh, 0 comma 1 without lifting our pen and the limit from the left is the limit from the right equals the overall limit and equals the 
function value. Okay, however, for instance, at x equals 2, which is right here, this was a value where the limit from the left was 5, the limit from the right was 2, the overall limit does not exist. Immediately, if the limit does not exist, the function is not continuous at that x value. And you see it here with this notion of lifting your pen. If I try to trace through, see I have to pick up my pen and then move back down here. Okay, so this jump in the graph forces me to lift <laughs> my pen or cursor or whatever you're happy to tr be tracing with, but this jump is a place where the function is not continuous. And in this, for this x value, the limit doesn't exist. Now, at four, this is also, this function is not continuous at four. The limit exists, right? The limit from the left is the limit from the right equals three. We discussed that in the last video, but f of four, is not defined that's this open hole so the limit does not exist at four because the function value is not defined but just like i changed in the last problem i could change here and define let's see if i gave it four four we use this when we were looking at limits now the function has changed here the limit exists at x equals four f of 4 is defined, so the first two parts in the definition of continuity are satisfied. However, it's still not continuous at x equals 4 because f of 4 is not equal to the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. And you see with this notion of tracing through the graph with your pen, I would trace to here, pick up my pen, color that in, pick it up again, and then come back down. So even with this f of 4 being defined in this, well, defined this way, f of 4 is 4, this function is not continuous. Now, if I changed it slightly again and made like this, now we do have continuity at 4 because the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x equals f of 4. Okay, but I'm just going to take that off and go back to the <laughs> original way we were looking at the function. We say a function is continuous provided it's continuous at every x value in its domain. So what I had down here was talking about continuity at a point, but we just say the function is continuous well, as a function, if it's continuous at every point in its domain. Now, the wonderful thing about continuity and continuous functions is that many, many functions we know and love are continuous functions. And let's write some examples. So many functions are continuous. For example, polynomials. This we actually discussed last time. Um, also though, rational functions. Now, please understand, to say a, a function is continuous does not mean it's continuous on the whole real line. For example, rational functions will not be because their domain is not necessarily the whole real line. Rational function is polynomial divided by polynomial. We know we can't divide by zero, but these are continuous on their domain, which would be the places where the denominator is not equal to zero. Okay, what else is continuous? Exponential functions, logarithmic functions, What else? Ah, trigonometric functions, but also the inverse trig functions, and these we will get to, if you haven't seen them, we will get to them this semester. So we have trig functions and inverse trig functions.
Well, then I will just say you can also add multiply, divide, uh, compose. If you do any of these operations to continuous functions, you get a continuous function. Add, multiply, divide, compose uh, functions on this list. Here is a piecewise defined function, f of x, and we want to identify the x values where this function is not continuous. Well, we will look at a graph of this function, but before we do, I want to answer this question looking at the formula or using the formula. So let's think for a moment. If x is strictly less than minus 1, we have quadratic. This is polynomial. This part is continuous. And similarly, well, if you're strictly between minus 1 and 0, it's a linear piece. f of x is x, and this is continuous, polynomial. And finally, if you're bigger than 0, again, we have this polynomial part which is continuous. Okay, but the problem could be at these, well, break points, as I would call them, or, or where you, on, on one side of the x value, you have one function definition, and on the other side of the x value, you have another function definition. What could happen is that the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right, and so the limit does not exist and if that happens, well, the function is not continuous at that x value. And so we're going to use the limit from the left, the limit from the right to figure this out. So the possible x values where it would not be con continuous would be, as I mentioned here, and similarly here at these, these breakpoints as I was referring to them. Okay, so let's compute the limit as you approach minus 1 on the left and the limit as you approach minus 1 on the right. If these two are equal and equal to the function value, then we can say it's continuous at minus 1. If these two are not equal, then the limit does not exist at minus 1, and immediately we know the function is not continuous. Okay, well, let's start with the limit from the left. What do we want to use? We are coming in this way. We use values less than minus 1, and if you look in our function, values less than minus 1 is the top. This is the function definition when you are less than minus one. Okay, well now, when we go to evaluate this, this limit we can do, right? This, we can just evaluate. This would be minus one squared plus one, two. Now come in from the right. So coming in from the right of minus one. From the right of minus one, this is the function value. So this would be the limit of just x, this limit, and again we can just evaluate. Immediately we see the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right, so the overall limit does not exist, and so we know the function is not continuous at x equals minus 1. because the limit does not exist. Now, the other potential place where we may have the function not continuous here at zero, so let's compute the limit as x goes to zero on the left, and the limit as x approaches zero on the right. We move over. If you are here approaching zero from the left, we use this function definition. 
So this is the limit. This is the function for values less than zero. And here we get zero. Similarly, when we come in from the right, we use values greater than zero. It's this function definition. And this limit we can evaluate, we get zero. So here we do see that the limit as x approaches zero of the function is zero. Moreover, what is f of zero? Well, use this, right? The equals is here. f of zero is zero. And if, so we get that f is continuous at zero from this calculation. The only x value, therefore, the only x value where this function is not continuous is this one, minus one. Now, let's look at a picture of this graph. Here is the graph of this piecewise defined function we just saw, and we calculated that the function was not continuous at minus one. It was continuous at zero, okay? But we see graphing this piecewise defined function. We see this, this jump where at minus one. So we would have to pick up our pen and tracing through that point, not continuous. Just as we calculated using the limits. Here is an example involving continuity. And really this example is a limit calculation and it will lead us, we will do some more with limits right after this. But what we see, we will define a function on, this is positive real numbers, as follows. As long as x is not equal to three, this is the function definition. And if x equals three, we g of three is capital A. Where a is some number, we wanna find capital A so that g of x is continuous at three. Okay. Well, this part, this, this first part of the function definition, this is a continuous function on its domain because you see, if we had the, remember this list of continuous functions I had, this fits that. We have one over x minus a third divided by x minus three. This will be continuous on its domain. And so what we really need is, we need this, so we need, this number a, which is the function value, to be the limit as x approaches three of g of x. So as I mentioned, this is just a limit calculation. We calculate this limit and then define it to be that capital A, the function value. So let's do this now. A limit as x approaches three of g of x equals, well, it's a limit as x approaches three, one over x minus a third over x minus three. If you try to evaluate, problematic, because this was an example where we get, well, it's a third over a third divided by three minus three, we get zero over zero, which means we must do something. And here, well, I have a fraction in the numerator, so I'm gonna get a common denominator for that fraction, which would be three times x. This would be a limit as x approaches three. In the numerator, I have three x. I have three minus x. And down here, I have, it's really x minus three divided by one. Now I can invert multiply. When I do, I have 3x times x minus 3. And then my numerator, I have 3 minus x. But in order to cancel, I'm going to write 3 minus x as negative x minus 3, like this, negative x minus 3. Now you see I can cancel. I get this as a limit as x approaches three of negative one over three x. Now, 
this is continuous, this function. Negative one over three x is continuous at three, which means I can just evaluate in order to calculate the limit. This is negative one over nine, and so this tells me the answer. I want to choose capital A is negative one over nine. And then if I do that, now I will put it here, negative one over nine. Now this function is continuous. Let's discuss another property of limits which involves continuous functions and is quite powerful. You will use this not only this semester, but in future semesters. Comes up a lot in Calc 2, for example. And let's suppose f is continuous, okay? And we want a limit as x approaches b of some composition. This is function composition here. Well, what we can do with a continuous function is we bring the limit inside. So this would be f of the limit as x approaches b of g of x. And this is provided the limit as x approaches b of g of x exists and we need it in the domain of f of x, okay? But this is very nice. You can bring the limit inside a continuous function. So let's do a few examples like this. The first example is here. It's a limit as x approaches pi sine of x plus sine x. Well, sine is a continuous function. It was on my list. The trig functions are continuous. So we can bring the limit inside Okay, well see here, x plus sine x is continuous. You can just evaluate. So we get sine of, this limit is pi plus sine pi. Oh, here we go. Pi is here. Y value, sine is zero. So this is just the sine of pi plus zero, which is zero. So this limit is zero, and we use this property of bringing the limit inside a continuous function. Let's do one more. The limit as x goes to infinity of natural log 2x minus natural log x plus one. Okay, now you might think what's happening Ah, this is actually a really great review to be to remember what the logarithm looks like. Maybe I'll do it briefly here. The natural log goes to the point 1 comma 0 and looks like this. You take y equals e to the x and flip it over the line uh, y equals x. Right, so this is a graph or sketch of the natural log. So what you see, well, whether there's a two x or x plus one, this is the basic shape, but the natural log, I'll write this here, goes to infinity, it grows without bound. Now, infinity minus infinity that's not anything. You cannot make any conclusion based on that. This grows without bound, this grows without bound. You cannot say zero. For instance, that property, if you have function minus function, and this has one limit, this has one limit, then you take the difference to get the limit of the difference. That's only when the limit exists as a finite number. And here you cannot say infinity minus infinity. Okay. But what can we do here? We can use properties of logs. So the first thing I will do is 
The property of log I will use if you have a difference of two logs. It's really a quotient. So this is 2x over x plus 1. And now the natural log is continuous, right? So we may bring the limit inside. And this is one like we practiced last time. We could, if you don't see it right away, just divide everything by the highest power of x, which is just x. We have 2 over 1 plus 1 over x. And now we can evaluate this limit. This 1 over x approaches 0. The limit on the inside of the natural log is 2. And so this, this limit is the natural log of 2. And it really used the fact that you can bring the limit inside a continuous function. The last thing I'd like to discuss today is something called the Intermediate Value Theorem, which says suppose you have a continuous function, continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and Y is some number strictly between F of A and F of B. Now, maybe I will just add this. In other words, you either have that f of a is less than y is less than f of b, or perhaps f of b is like this, okay? Because you don't know which one's bigger, f of a or f of b. Okay, then there exists a C. So this is some number in the open interval A to B with F of C equals Y. Let me draw a picture. Okay, I'll draw a continuous function. And let me ha draw, find an interval, say A to B and then I go up to the function, here is f of a, y value, and then here is f of b, y value. And you see, based on my picture, I am in this case where f of b is less than f of a, but I could have drawn the picture differently and been in this case. Okay, so what is this saying? And we really need continuous here, otherwise you, it's not true. It says you pick any number, y value, any y value here, y value, okay? Now, it, then you can find an x value between these two. Well, I wouldn't pick, so certainly, by my picture, if I pick an x value here, it satisfies f of x is y, but that's not between a and b. So we go between a and b. Looks like the, this is at height y, and we can find the c. This would be the point on the graph c, y, meaning f of c equals y. And you can do that for every y value between f of b and f of a. For this to be true, intermediate value theorem, as I mentioned, it really uses continuity because, for example, you can't pick up your pen and jump over some y value, okay? For example, let me just quickly sketch and then I will erase. If we had a graph like this, Okay, if this was f of x, of course not continuous. But also, this does not satisfy the intermediate value theorem because, and this understanding what doesn't work is, is an important part of understanding the statement, but here is a b, f of a here, f of b here, and there are many. So for example, pick anywhere where there's no 
function value right here, this height. There's no x between a and b with f of x being this pink height. And that comes from the jump in the function. It comes from the lack of continuity of the function on the interval, okay? So for this theorem to hold, it requires continuity. Maybe I will erase my non-picture because this is a statement about continuous functions. No matter which y value you pick between f of a and f of b, you can find at least one c between a and b with f of c equals y. Okay, this is the intermediate value theorem. Now, how are we gonna use this in a problem? Well, let's do an example. Here is an example we want to use in this capital I, capital V, capital T is the intermediate value theorem to show this equation, e to the x is 3 minus 2x, has at least one root on the closed interval 0 to 1, or at least one solution to this equation. Now this is not a function, this is an equation. So we first begin by defining a function. which is going to be, let's say, e to the x minus three plus two x, okay? And we're gonna look at this on zero to one. Well, this function is continuous because, well, it, it's a sum of polynomial and an exponential function. And these were on my list of functions that are continuous. But it's continuous on the whole real line. Certainly it's continuous on zero to one. F of zero is e to the zero minus three plus zero. e to the zero is one. This is negative two, this is less than zero. F of one is, well, it's e minus three plus two, which is e minus one. What do we know about e? Well, it's a number between two and three. So e minus one is greater than zero. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, that f of zero is less than zero, is less than f of one. And so by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a c in the open interval with f of c equals this value, zero. And this is our root, comma, meaning e to the c minus three plus two c equals zero, or e to the c is three minus two c, like this. So this has guaranteed a solution to this equation using the intermediate value theorem.